Hey everyone, this is Louis from Edgeable Developer Relation Team. We recently announced two exciting new features. One is the Edgeable's Python SDK, which lets you interact with Edgeable Studio only from a Jupyter Notebook, a Python script. And the other one is Bring Your Own Model, which lets you train your model elsewhere than Edgeable's and then bring that model, profile it, and compile a C++ library to embark that model in an embedded device. So feel free to have a look at the documentation, docs.edgeimpulse.com slash docs slash edgeimpulse Python SDK overview. And on this page, you'll get the main function that you, that you can use. It's pretty straightforward. Just do Python or pip3 install edgeimpulse, then get your API key from your dashboard. And from there, you can list profile, profile devices. So I have a list of which device or which architecture that we support for, for profiling. And then you'll get a results for float 32 or quantized model, if you, if you like, or if you have quantized model, and then you can deploy it either as a C++ library using the zip format or Arduino, CubeMX, WebAssembly, or compiling the .aem, which are our executable Linux formats that you can run on Linux, Raspberries, and the MacBook Pros, etc. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can interact with Edgeimpulse Studio. So use Edgeimpulse Python SDK from SageMaker Studio. I created a tutorial for this workshop and you can have a look at it on the documentation. You can either view it here on the documentation on edgeimpulse.com, view the source or on GitHub or download the notebook. What we are going to do is to train an image classification model using transfer learning and then uh, bring that model that we, that we train using SageMaker on Edgeimpulse. We'll then compile a library, a C++ library that we can run on embedded devices. So I assume that by now you have a Maker Studio ready and uh, configure the domain, etc., with the S3 buckets. I've selected the data science 3.0 kernel, which should contain everything that we, that we need. I also changed the data sets from the, from the default example that the AWS provide, which can be found on the, on this link of the Jupyter notebook, which were flowers, if I remember well. So yeah, Rose, Dandelion, etc. In my case, I'm going to classify a car versus unknown. So whether there is a car in the image or it's unknown. My S3 buckets is configured like the following. So it has, so that's the default S3 buckets that, is, that comes along with SageMaker Studio. And it has one repository that, that is called car versus unknown in which there is two folders, one training folder and one testing folder. And in that, in those folders, there is a car and unknown folders containing the, the pictures. I can, I can quickly show you so car versus unknown. I'm going to use the training data sets and then car. And then here it should contain like five, 581 objects. And in the other one, unknown uh, should be something similar. So almost, yeah, 600. That being said, let's get started and let's start to execute that notebook. So I'm going to first install the dependencies. So I'm going to use TensorFlow 2.12 and I'm going to pip install Edgeimpulse, which will contain the Edgeimpulse library, Python library that I can use to interact with the studio. Okay, so transfer learning. Here is how my data set is structured. Then I will initiate a session with SageMaker, I'm located on the EU North one, which is Stockholm, if I remember well. I'm going to print a number of images. Here it's only a thousand, probably it shrinks the, the content. So basically what I'm doing here is I, I, I say here where is located my training data set. And then I can directly train, train the model using the base model. So if I have a look at the base model available here, I'm using, huh, an IC models. I'm, I'm using TensorFlow based models. So I tested with 
mobile nets models, and it should work with all those ones. I haven't tested with the efficient nets, but that probably feel free to try and let me know on the, on the forum. If you have any issues, forum.engineports.com, I would be more than happy to, 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 to help you. So here I've selected a, a, a small model. So v, uh, using mobile net V3 small, so with an alpha of 0.50, 75 and square images of 224 pixels by 224. So I'm going to check where is located that, that base model. If you don't want to retrain the model, you can just skip this training part and there you will be able to download the base model using the inference. And you can also import that to Edge Import Studio. On this video, I'm going to show you to how to you well, how to do the transfer learning part because I think it's it's important that you can train your your model on custom data sets so that is dedicated to your business issue. It should take a couple. So <clears throat> in here, I'm I'm going to just go quickly over that. I'm going to choose for the training the machine learning instance so M5 large. I'm going to get the image URI, the source URI, the, the model URI, and then I'm going to pass everything, including my S3 bucket, and also my, my base images in that estimator. And this estimator will then uh, train a custom model, and I will be able to get from the next step the, the model that has been trained with my data set. So I'm going to pause the video for uh, for a couple of, of seconds. Last time I tried, it, it took about like uh, between 300 and 600 seconds. So between five and, and 10 minutes. And once it's trained, I'm coming back. So it was actually pretty fast. Now the model is trained. You can have a look at the logs. And so here, the, the training actually appear where we can see the accuracy, the validation accuracy, and quick model summary. It actually took 213 seconds. So once I've got my model, I can get the, um, I, I can download the, from the, from the URL. So it's in my S3 buckets. And here is the outputs of, of my model. So here I'm downloading the tar.jz. If you just want to download the base model and not the, the train model, so the fine tune model, you can just comment that out and, and come on this one. So I'm not going to do that for this video. Now I've got the, the archive of my, model, of my model. What I'm going to do is to extract it. So I'm creating a temporary directory and I'm extracting it. So if you have a look at it, the save model, and so the, the TensorFlow save model is here. And I can see the labels. So here is cars versus unknown. Going back with it and I'm going to convert that model using, so I'm loading using Keras the model to convert it to TensorFlow. This is a temporary fix because, <clears throat> because when I tried to convert it directly using the, the TensorFlow TFLI converter, I had some issues with the inputs, uh, input formats. So one quick fix was to use uh, the Keras uh, way of converting that. Hopefully it will be fixed soon. So this, this part won't be necessary anymore and we will be able to directly upload the save model. I'm suspecting that it works with the way SageMaker Studio is, 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 is using the, the TensorFlow based model. I'm not completely sure I have the time to fully investigate, but that's what I found from now. So now I've got the model that TensorFlow lights. What I can do now is to retrieve my, my API key. So from there, you need to have an Edge Impulse project and you can go to the keys and here, uh, just copy. Uh, so you need to double click on the, on the key and paste this one. Uh, it's probably the same. Yeah. In, in your, in your AI dot API key. 
So this will configure your Gimpulse Python SDK with with your project. Then I can list the the, the device the, or the, the profile the profiling that is available. For this workshop, I've chosen to use the Raspberry Pi 4, which is here, but you can profile for another on the, on other edge devices or even some architectures, for example, the Cortex M4F or Cortex M7. And I'm going to pass the model, so the model the TF lights to Edge Impulse. So the our servers can do the profiling. I'm going to run that. It should take a couple of, of seconds, maybe a maybe a minute. In the meantime, you can you can also have a look that the model is actually be, it will be uploaded over there. If you want to follow the jobs, you can also check that here. Image pool, profiling. Etc. Etc. So it should be almost the same the same logs as here. So while it's doing that, I'm also going to actually add a couple of data in my test data sets. So I'm going to upload some data to test. So I'm I'm going to go in my in my testing data set and I'm going to so that's probably not the best image. I'm going to upload a couple of images of cars. Load. I'm going to add a couple of images of unknown things. Upload data. Okay. We've got 20, 27 items in my test set. I will then be able to, so it's still calculating to, to test my models using Edge Impulse Studio. Back here, still waiting to finish. So job re response success equal to true. So for the Raspberry Pi 4 device type, I will get two things. So one on the memory, well, one is the TF lights and one is with the Eon. So with the Eon compiler, which is our, our, our compiler to compile the, the model. And then you'll get the inference time. So both you, you've got information on both RAM and ROM. And if you want to have a look as well here, you can get the information. You can also test in real, in real conditions. So classification here, it's going to be cars versus unknown. I'm going to uh, choose a file. So here you have the possibility to directly choose a file, else you can go to the model testing. So if I'm doing that and let me try with a car. You can test that on the sample. And I've got a probability of that being a car uh, here. So I'm suspecting here we're missing one last softmax layer, probably. Yeah, but still the, the cars one has more prob probability. Let me try that as well with an unknown file. Test the sample. Yeah, here and the probability is negative. So here we go. We've got our model uploaded to Edge Impulse. Now what I, what I want to show you as well is the deployment types. So we have several options to deploy that model, that custom model that we trained to, to make it ready for, for an embedded device. Here I'm going to choose the zip, which will be the C++ library, but you can also choose the WebAssembly, something like which is ready to go with the, uh, let's say, Raspberry Pi 4. Where is that one? It's probably the Linux uh, ARMv7. I'm gathering the labels, so cars versus unknown. That will help me and uh, help my model to know and to, to set the metadata to make the, to, to give you some results during the inference. And now I'm going to compile from my model the C library. This can take some time. I'm going to stop my video for, for a second and I'm coming back to you to explain what's inside that, that C library. So I just finished and now I've got my, my model C++.zip folder as so archive. I'm going to, ex or to download this one just to show you what's inside. 
And on this one, I've got the Edge Impulse C++ SDK, the model parameters, where I've got the metadata and the variables, the GF Lite models. So everything, everything is ready to be compiled and run on your embedded devices or on your, even on your MacBook or that, that should work. I also wanted to quickly show you, so that's, that's it. From there, we've seen how to train a custom model using SageMaker Studio and compile it to a C++ library that it can be run on embedded systems. What I wanted to show you as well is the, um, so the deployment options. So here we've got the C++ library. I wanted to try as well that. Here the Arduino, it should, it's probably won't run on any Arduino based boards because of the, of the size of the model. If you go to the model testing, so from the data that we imported previously, you can click on classify all. So it will be just running the inference on each devices and it will give you an overview of your accuracy on your test accuracy. Hmm. I think it's okay. So it for, it haven't saved the image, the input type formats, which is the image. I'm just going to go back to the model testing and I'm going to click on classify all again. Okay, so on my probably 20, 25, 30 images, here I've got one that is uncertain. I can show the live classification to have some more info. Actually, so here the confidence score is not high enough to recognize that as unknown. I can set the confidence threshold here to, to fix that. But either way, that that's it. You've seen how to how to interact from SageMaker to Edge Impulse Studio and compile models to embedded devices. That's it for me. That was Louis from Edge Impulse Developer Relation Team. Thanks a lot for watching and feel free to go on forum.edgeimpulse.com if you have any questions. I would be more than happy to answer you. Have a good day.